Hello, everybody, and welcome to this session. So my name is Morgan Richom. I'm NEV architect for Orange, and I will do the presentation with Arthur Berezin, a director of product management for uh, Cloudify. So the topic today is about uh, VIMS uh, deployment in OPNFV, and by extension, some lesson learned on best practice for VNF and boring uh, on OpenStack. So, sure. OK. So the agenda, will, first I will give some, some indication on what is VIMS. I know that we are in OpenStack Summit. VIMS sounds really telco and t really NFV, so a few words on, on VIMS. Then we will detail why we need an orchestration. We will come back to OPNFV and Funk test with the functional testing in OPNFV, focus on the VMS test case that has been fully integrated in OPNFV, and a conclusion about lesson learned on what will be the future for VNF testing within OPNFV project and more globally on OpenStack. So first of all, what is VIMS? So I, I don't know if you are all familiar with uh, beautiful uh, telco architecture. So VIMS means virtual uh, IP multimedia s subsystem. It's a, a framework that can be defined by 3GPP uh, quite a long time ago now. Uh, it's an architectural framework to deliver IP multi multimedia services. Today, it's mainly used for voice over IP services. And if you have service provider providing voice over IP services, usually it's managed by, a VM, uh, by the IMS solution. Uh, it's fully designed, fully defined, lots of standardization behind. All the interface are fully defined. So it's a very complex and rich telco architecture offering large scale telco deployment, including all the telco usual uh, constraints such as legal interception, emergency number, etc., etc. So as you can see, I will not detail all the box, but lots of people work on that. They detail all the different interfaces, all the different uh, box and the protocol, everything. So it's really usual stuff we do in telco, where people spend years defining that, and then the vendor, they are implementing solutions, and we make lots of interoperability in order to make all these bugs working well together. So it's still very uh, interesting to, to consider VIMS because it's the core network. It's used for LTE, so the new evolution of the network. It's very well known in, in the telco world. It's already deployed in lots of telco. You have some constraints uh, that are specific also to telco, such as legal interception, emergency number, as I say. Usually people from IT, they say, oh, you just have to get rid of your infrastructure and, and do everything from scratch. But we have really big constraints that we, we must take into account. And, and that has been precisely defined. So why deploying a VIMS? So because it sounds really NFV. In a PNV project, I will detail a little bit uh, later, uh, we started putting very basic tests, such as ping between VMs. But for a telco, making ping between VMs does not really make sense. So it was decided to, to find something that sounds more in a V. And there was an open source cloud ready solutions on the market. So Clearwater solution by Metaswitch. Uh, it's very well known if you are used to attend Mobile World Congress on any summit, then you have lots of demo with Metaswitch solution. But the idea was really to be able to, to, to integrate it and to automat, automate totally the solution from the orchestration to the testing. So this solution is already deployed by some telcos. And we need also a, an easy solution to orchestrate it and to see how it was feasible to have a VMS in a DevOps uh, loop and, and see how it was possible. And why it's on OpenStack? Because OpenAV, even if it's not uh, mandatory, but today, in the last version of Colorado, the 37 scenarios that are, have been validated are based on OpenStack as a cloud provider. So OpenStack is no more an option. OpenStack has been adopted by most of the telco in the keynote yesterday morning. So that anyway was one of the key topic. So it means that my colleague from Germany, they, 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 they were on stage showing that, OK, we, we are dealing with NEV. Last year, AT&T received the Super user award. This year it was China Mobile. So you can see that telco are uh, part of the business. And VIMS for them means something. 
So that's a very brief introduction on VIMS, and then I will give the floor to, to uh, Arthur to, to explain why we need a VNF, but we need also a way to orchestrate it. Thank you. Right, so we've seen this diagram, this nice little diagram, which is very simple, right? <laughs> so essentially, you know, a system such as an IMS, it's a very complex system. It has a lot, a lot of components, which essentially, you know, com comes down to the basic uh, components that we are all known and familiar with, right? So that's, you know, essentially virtual machines, virtual routers, maybe some neutron configuration, maybe some, some software that we install on top of that virtual machine. But essentially, these are repeatable components uh, that we use in an environment. Essentially, you know, it, it's, it's, uh, there's a lot of complexity into creating the right setup and the right, uh, the right deployment for a working actual environment. So orchestration is, is, is really all about you know, taking automated processes. For example, install a router, configure a router, install a virtual machine on, with specific configuration for and prepare it for a specific deployment. For example, you know, add EPA configuration to that virtual machine. Those kinds of automated processes. And orchestration is about taking these automated processes and essentially uh, deploy, them in, uh, deploy them in a repeatable manner and in a, in a manner that, uh, that, that can create the right uh, workflow to bring up an actual working environment. So essentially orchestration is all about creating these dynamic workflows based on those repeatable automated uh, processes. So, you know, obviously, you know, we take this such as a, a complex example as, as an IMS, and, you know, we break it down to se several repeatable components, and essentially, we create the dynamic workflows to onboard and to install and then uh, manage these applications on runtime as well. Now, one of the challenges, obviously, you know, we can script the whole thing, we can script, you know, the, the automated scripts on top of that, but one of the very complicated things about orchestration is making sure that you have the right context for each and every component in the environment, right? Because like, if you're installing in a virtual machine, the next component that needs to install on top of that virtual machine needs to know all the details from that virtual machine. Now the next virtual machine, for example, we have you know, another virtual machine that, that, uh, that uh, has the router on top of that. It needs to know the credentials and the IP address for the first virtual machine that we installed. So we need to know and pass the, intel in the, the context of the whole deployment intelligently between these dynamic workflows that we produce in order to onboard such a complex environment. So I'll give a short introduction into Cloudify. I'll try not to steal too much time uh, <laughs> today. So essentially, Cloudify is a, you know, a, 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 an NFV orchestration platform. Uh, it falls under the orchestration for service and resource orchestration uh, category, but also is a, a generic VNF manager uh, based on Tosca. It's fully open source, and we also have a commercial addition to it uh, based on the premium package. Uh, and the cool thing about it is that, is that it's highly pluggable. Uh, I'll, I'll detail the, that in a bit, but the, the main idea here is that essentially everything that you can think of and has an API and has a way to connect to it and control it somehow programmatically, we can very easily plug Cloudify into the whole loop and to, uh, to orchestrate uh, that, uh, that specific device. So as I mentioned earlier, Cloudify is based on Tosca. And Tosca has three main uh, parts to it. The first is the topology, essentially a YAML description of the application topology. Uh, which looks something along these lines. Obviously, you know, I can have a small unit of measurement. I can have larger me uh, composed uh, blueprints for the more complex application that describe my whole network service. And I simply, you know, use a simple DSL, a simple YAML DSL to describe uh, my topology. Uh, and again, this is a language, right? Tosca essentially is a, is, is a description language. Uh, so you can always extend it. You can always introduce new node types. For example, you know, the language itself comes with a set of normative types uh, that I can consume for, for describing my application, but I can always extend it. Okay, so what I, what I mean by that is that I can introduce a new node type to expose and express a new, a new uh, component that was not, you know, not, not, was not included in the, in the original uh, generic uh, set of types that I can use as part of the language. And then I can obviously compose uh, my application based on, on these node types. Uh, now the second part and the more complex and interesting part in, you know, in our view is the workflows. Essentially workflows, uh, workflows are uh, very important to be, this, uh, to be the declarative, right? And what we mean by declarative is that we produce these workflows and we execute these workflows 
based on the topology. All right? So essentially I have uh, my application description as we have the example here. Uh, and I have a you know, very simple application, simple two node application. Obviously each of them can be a scaling unit of its own. So I can scale for example the, the compute node for, for the database or for whatever. And then we essentially based on the life cycle uh, events, based on the life cycle operations, sorry. And uh, for each uh, node type, okay, based on these life cycle operations we can produce a workflow dynamically to trigger, for example, an install operation uh, for a specific VNF, for example, just for onboarding, right? Uh, so these are the declarative workflows. And obviously, we also have the imperative workflows. So essentially, you can you have a, your own internal workflow in your, you know, for your specific VNF that you would like to express. So you have the ability to create that uh, imperative workflow as well with an access to the topology. So we, this is something we call uh, the context of the, of the deployment. So essentially once you, uh, once you deploy uh, a VNF, you have a context and you can always access these components using simple, you know, simple Python code in order to, for example, pull out an IP of a database or pull out an IP of a router or, or you know, uh, query the number of uh, interfaces for a specific device. So these are the imperative workflows. Now the third, uh, the third uh, part that completes the whole picture is the policies. So I can set policies uh, to trigger specific workflows based on events that are happening in my, in my environment. So for example, I, I, I monitor my, my CPU load on my uh, virtual router. And once I recognize, for example, the amount of traffic, the, amount, the, the, the volume of the CPU, the memory consumption, et cetera, et cetera, I can you know, uh, take these metrics and describe a policy saying that once uh, I reach a certain load, I can trigger a scale event for that router. Right? So that policy would simply trigger the scale workflow. And essentially part of that workflow, I would simply steer the traffic, part of the traffic to my new virtual router that I've just uh, provisioned. So these are the policies. So just to put the whole picture together, I'm, I'm describing in a simple blueprint, simple Tosca blueprint, my whole application. And in that blueprint, I can include you know, the resources. Uh, for example, I can have scripts. I can ans have Ansible components to install specific parts of the application. I can have chef uh, modules, et cetera, et cetera. If I, if I choose, I can use an image, for example, or I can choose you know, a pre-deployed uh, image on glance if, I, if I'd like to, depending on how I create uh, the descriptor for my application. So Cloudify essentially takes that application blueprint and uses a set of plugins in order to communicate with the underlying infrastructure uh, to onboard that application, right? So for example, if my application blueprint contains an OpenStack node, obviously the OpenStack plugin would have the logics uh, to access the OpenStack API to trigger the, you know, the, the Nova command create and obviously pass it with all the needed parameters in order for it to work successfully. For example, you know, creating the neutral network, creating all the dependent components and passing all the needed parameters for that. And then, you know, the really cool uh, things we can do with that is that we can mix and match types, right? So we can use an OpenStack type. Inside that OpenStack type, we can describe uh, using a, uh, a Docker type, for example. And inside that Docker type, we can describe deploying an application, right? So we, and then we can say uh, the networking piece of that is implemented using an SDN controller, right? So we can have a description of, of a network that is being controlled by an SDN controller, Open Daylight, for example. Uh, and then we can create this topology for this application and essentially Cloudify talks with the APIs in order to realize and onboard and install and manage that application. So that's a quick intro to Cloudify. Thanks, Anthor. So now I will speak a, a bit more specifically on OpenAV, on FangTest, on how we use Cloudify to integrate Cloudware VMS solution. So first of all, OPNV, I don't know if everybody is familiar with that. So basically, initially, the scope was to work on the integration, because it's an integration and testing project. Uh, integration of the best of breeds of the open source world in order to, to build a telco cloud solution. To build telco cloud scenarios with lots of integration, so different SDN controller, different feature. Um, so we put that together, we test it, and we give some confidence into the different integration we can have. So initially, the VNF are out of scope of that. But of course, if you want to test a system, you need some VNF to test it. So that's uh, the way OpenAV is doing. So we have integration testing on new feature uh, project. 
Uh, a new feature uh, is one that has been shown in a keynote, so the doctor or the fault monitoring. So every time we detect something that is not covered today, we can initiate a project that will try to answer to a problem. And the other main project are testing and integration. So we can see here the different components we're integrating and that are uh, distributed among the different projects that are testing through uh, CI on a federation of labs distributed all around the world in order to provide confidence into the different integration. Uh, so the, this project is under uh, the Linux Foundation uh, organization. Lots of companies are taking part to, to, to that. So what we do is we give confidence to scenario. That's what I want to say. So a scenario today is OpenStack plus network controller plus feature plus mode, mode meets high availability or non high availability. So for the functional testing, for example, you have different tests you run. And then, for example, here you have two scenarios. You have the ONOS SFC scenario. So you have the ONOS controller plus SFC add-ons in order to have uh, this feature. And here you have a no SDN, so it means a pure neutron, so it's pure open stack with that feature on non HS, so that's a, a dev stack or something similar, with different installer, and then you have the different uh, tests. So that's what OPNV is doing. And today we have different uh, combination, of course, we have different installer, different tests, uh, different way to do end-to-end -end automation. For the installer, we have Fuel from Marianti, CRDO, Red Hat, Juju, Canonical, and Compass from Huawei. And for the test project, we have functional performance, qualification, storage, different test projects that are dealing with specific aspects. The third release has been uh, announced on the 22nd of September, and we are working on the fourth uh, soon. Uh, uh, so, my project, uh, I used to be PTL until two weeks, uh, on, on the functional testing project, uh, was ready to, to, to deal with functional testing in OpenAV. So, does it work, does it not work? We have internal test case, such as VPings, as I say, between different VM, feature test, and we have also, uh, of course, uh, reusing uh, massively all the upstream test suites that already exist. So we are running Rally, running, running Tempest, running ODL or ONOS testing suite in order to give to the integration a global scoring and a confidence level. For fun tests, we use a, a, a Docker file. So you can use it even if it's not OpenAV. Any OpenStack-based solution can use uh, this, uh, this Docker and it can be used to, to trigger all the different tests we have today. So it includes the tooling, the test scenario, and uh, the, test, uh, yeah, the test scenario. So Funk test will also give an automatic reporting based on all the different re results, that's what you show in the picture, and then you have a, a global scoring. So now I will come back specifically to VMS, and that's where open source is really cool. So unfortunately, this gentleman cannot be there today because he's at school and he's the one responsible for, 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 for the EMS in OPNV. He's in internship in Orange, he's six months at school, six months in Orange. And you know, he, he's smart and he was a bit fed up playing with Lego, so he said, okay, I will play it with advanced Legos, and then he looks and okay, Clearwater is a cool Lego, Cloudify is a cool one, so he, he mix and match, and he's the one who really uh, put all this stuff in, in motion. And it's quite funny because when you say it's, it's, I don't know, 20 or something like that, and he didn't really ask for a lot of supports because the different Legos were well documented and was able to, to build a complete end-to-end -end integration and automation of the test case in OPNV. So I mentioned the VMS solution. Here that's the VMS uh, implementation by uh, Clearwater. So all the interface uh, respect the VIMS um, 3GPP specification. The implementation is a bit different, and we say it's cloud ready. For example, we use a Cassandra Ring database, so a NoSQL database for, for the HLR and things like that. So, implementation is a bit different. It's really cloud ready, which is interesting. And why we choose Cloudify? Uh, at the beginning, we test several solutions, but Cloudify was open source, of course, it was one of the condition, but there are different orchestrators, even if there are more since we, we started. But uh, the integration with OpenStack was pretty clear. I say no need to spend hours in, in documentation. Documentation was, was very good. There was a full lifecycle management already integrated in the system. 
It was based on Tosca. We rounded that as well. And the plugins, the, the openness of the solution was very, very nice. So that's why we decided to, he decided to go to, to, to Cloudify. It's possible probably you attended several, uh, I say, SDN World Congress, and any, any meeting. There are lots of demo with, uh, with Clearwater VIMS, and you can do it with other orchestrator, but this one was really easy to implement and easy to integrate into the OpenAV framework. So here you can see an example of the Tosca descriptor, so the blueprint. You can download it if you want. Uh, the description is relatively simple, and based on the descriptor on the Tosca, then we will just show a step-by-step -step, uh, deployment of the system. So in OpenAV, we have labs, so what we call Pharos Lab. Pharos is the name, that, no, the, the name of the project managing all the infrastructure. So in OpenAV, we have more than 20 labs, I think, and it's automatically managed by Jenkins. Uh, when the installation of the system under test of the scenario is done in one lab, then we call Fang test. Fang test will create a, a Docker container in machine aside of the system. Then it will ask OpenSAC to create the first resources, so that the user, the tenant, everything. Then Fang test with uh, in, install Cloudify on a VM, and it will download all the um, the Tosca stuff in order to be able to deploy automatically all the VIMS, including the different nodes. So, Homestead, Homer, Sprout, Bono, Helis correspond to what we used to call in VMS CSCF, HLR, all the 3GPP basic stuff. Then it runs that. Additionally, in a fun test container, Metaswitch plan, they, they develop an, a, a set of a signaling testing. So, we have more than 100 signaling testing testing the different interfaces, so it's purely SIP here. You don't have a performance or stress test, but lots of signaling with all the different scenarios or register, invite, re-invite, redirection of call, etc. So you're able to automatically send all these tests. You provision automatically the database and run all the testing, and it's run from the jump post, so from something that is considered out of the system. So it's really seen as a black box and a test as an user. And when it's done, it collects the results and it push the result to the result API that is used to give the scoring to the scenario. So at the end, the result will be something like that. So here, uh, so it's uh, last uh, June. So you have the three steps. So the orchestrator time for deployment, so that's the time we, 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 we need for, for the deployment of uh, Cloudify, then the Clearwater deployment, and signaling, t signaling testing. So you can see here that the testing was not so good, but uh, it has improved a little bit. And we, we had the complete uh, list of testing, so some tests were useless. Uh, for example, we don't have service application on top of this VIMS, so we were trying to, 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 to test it anyway. So we improved that, and uh, in, in the next release, we, we exclude this. So that's what uh, has been done by, by uh, Valentin. And it has been integrated already in the uh, end of the Brahma Putra release, so the release before the one uh, from September. But it has been improved uh, since this date. And we can see that based on this test case, we learned several things. And for the next release, we plan to have more VNF onboarding. And practical testing of the VNF based on the same methodology that he used for VIMS. So the main lesson learned is the test case is, it is interesting because testing just ODL or component is interesting, but for a telco, we need systems, and we need telco-grade system. So we, we had a VMS solution that were, was telco-grade, and we have also uh, an orchestrator tool that allows us to deploy it very easily. Uh, so it's, yeah, in 40 minutes, you have a complete uh, deployment of a VMS. So if people are working in ops, uh, in telco, it's quite quick regarding what we have uh, usually. So we have access to, so we, we learn lots of things doing this. We, we, we saw also some constraints that lead to some improvement on uh, some installer, so they need to do some improvement. Uh, and uh, we were able to make also a functional test. Uh, it's interesting to see that the work that has been done uh, here have been reused massively after that by vendor that use all the Tosca script and the methodology and the documentation that have been done for PNV. 
as part of the, of the training, so I know that Myrantis, uh, Alu, Nokia, and, and other companies use it as uh, an example. So it was interesting to see that the work from students that just play Lego with technical building blocks was back to, to vendor in order to, to sell it to telco that create the thing. But the, it's quite unusual. So for the future of the VNN testing, what we believe is that orchestration battle just began. So there are lots of orchestrators on market at the moment, lots of open source solutions, lots of different uh, options. Uh, what we want to do in OPNFV is, okay, there is a, a slight battle, but we want to have a reality battle. So what I say to people coming with, okay, I have a new orchestrator, which is the best of the world, say, okay, just integrate a test case using the same methodology and show, show us that it's in CI and that we can, because as it's in CI, we're able to run VIMS on all the installer, on all the platform, and get results. Uh, so, so we were really able to, to distribute it massively into different configurations with different SDN controller and see uh, the potential problems. So what I said to them is just do exactly as we do. Uh, create a test case, so maybe not VIMS, you can select other ones. And for the next release in OpenAV, we'll have new VNF, so there, there is a, a project from Okinawa Labs to have a vRouter and they reuse Cloudify because it was already there and I think they, they find it also very simple. There will be um, a VEPC from OpenAI interface coming with Juju as VNF. So there, there will also other combinations that are possible. But the idea is maybe to learn by doing. And as today, it's still not fully clear what, I mean, the interface between the orchestration. I mean, HC started doing the job, but everything is not finalized. So just do it, learn by doing, show what we can do. We can also uh, mention that uh, OpenAV organizes every six months a plug fest when we welcome of course, proprietary VNF to be tested. And uh, we did that in Colorado last time. There is a, a plug fest beginning of December in Boston this year. And for the future, we'll have new open source VNF. One also of the options, it will be to add new load test capability. I mentioned for the VIMS, it was only signaling. But there is a, a test project called Yastic in OpenMV, and we hope that in the near future, we should be able to call Yastic to generate traffic and to have additionally uh, also some stress test and some qualification with load test. And that's it for us. Yeah, pretty much. Thank you. Thank you. Has... Any questions? No question? Oh, okay, there you go. Okay, we, yeah, that, that's, uh, I think we cannot make a session without saying container in the session. So I should have, no, no. We but, did have a, a Docker logo in the, in the, in the, in the cloud of FR. But you're, you're right, you're right. Uh, I mean, we didn't try it yet because in OPNV, at least, we, we are not, uh, necessarily doing everything with OpenStack. We, we are validating scenario of integration, okay? But that's true that today, all the scenario of integration are based on OpenStack, and there is no scenario with OpenStack on Magnum and things like that. It's only pure OpenStack with KVM. It's only that. Uh, it's pretty sure that we can do that also in Contner. We will maybe do it in the future because there, there will be new scenario coming and they will integrate container. There is already a scenario in, um, one scenario is dealing with uh, LXC and LXD uh, in OPNAV, so we can reuse it that, but the VMS have not, has not been tested because it needs some adaptation. It has really been done in first step. At least the automation script has been done to, to match uh, the default configuration. But in OPNAV, we, we are try to be, to address all the scenarios, so we will have to adapt them to, 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 to the V, to, to the LXC scenario, and maybe later, if we have a Kubernetes or anything dealing with that, we will try to adapt that, yes, and adapt with the people that are coming with the scenario. But today, no, I have no example in all my list of scenario of a VMS deployment in Contner. I, I don't see any main obstacle for that, but uh, yeah, so, we didn't do that. So, so, so we'll be happy to see contribution to these repos of, of you know, supporting containers and supporting different environments. Yeah. Exactly. It's, it's exactly what we're doing with the VSBC because of the transition from the Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. 
Yeah, it's essentially, it's a set of applications you need to containerize, and once you containerize them, you can orchestrate them. It's, that's the, essentially by the end of the day, that's the story. Cool. Any further questions? So that's actually a good question. So why Cloudify and not Heat, for example? So Heat is solely focused on resources of OpenStack, right? This is the, orchestra, the, the OpenStack orchestration project. But usually, it's very important for you as a user to, 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 first of all, to be able to support multiple Vims, because essentially you want to have the ability to move your application from one Vim to another Vim. If you have your hot template, you're pretty much bound to OpenStack. And the second reason is that usually you do integration with additional technologies. Right? It's not only that you want to orchestrate OpenStack machines or OpenStack resources, you want to also, for example, integrate Puppet Chef. Yeah, for the test case, it's clear that you can use it, you can use Chef, you can use whatever you want. Yeah. But the guy who decided to implement it, he did that with Qualify because he think it was simple. And he was very happy with all the lifecycle management that was not available. But that's clear that initially when uh, Metaswitch used to be in OpenAV, when they, they, they start doing the, the test case, it was based on, on heat, simply on heat. And it was, it was not integrated in the CI because it was it's not finalized. And when we, in Orange, decided to, to we want really this test case into the, the release. Then we, yeah, so the guy who made the implementation just select uh, his favorite Lego, and this time it was Spotify. But it, it works perfectly well with other yeah. orchestrators, and I say Juju has also charm to do it if we want, and th that's the, the battle for orchestration, I say, just begun. But what we can say is for, from our experience, it was quite straightforward to, to do it with Spotify. And that's why for the new test case, so, uh, as I mentioned, people reuse exactly the same piece of code to redo the same thing. So deploy the orchestrator, deploy the VNF, test your VNF. But there are also some test cases in OpenAV that are, are just doing the stuff with Hit, and it's working also fine. There was another one. Yep. Could you speak a bit high, but uh, louder, or maybe go to the mic? Yeah, that's all. Mm -hmm. So, from my understanding, if you start your test case, you had a, a container first. Is it correct that from that container, you first install a virtual machine on top of OpenStack with Cloudify within, and then within that con within that virtual machine running on OpenStack, you start by reconfiguring. This, the same OpenStack uh, deployment, correct? Yeah, we have, we have a turn on. So from the fact that from the Docker, we just initiate the creation of the resource on OpenStack, creating a, a VM. On this VM, we install Cloudify. Then we ask Cloudify to consume the Tosca file. From this Tosca file, Cloudify call OpenStack again to create the different VM within the tenant and organize all the, the network and associate uh, deployment uh, from Clearwater. So that's I think that's yeah. what you say. Right. And would you say that this is a best approach of configuring the OpenStack from within the OpenStack, or would you prefer so, in operations that you have it outside? So What's usually, you, right. So usually, you know, you, you, you see the diagram, and essentially you have the orchestrator talking to the OpenStack, right? But the orchestrator needs to run somewhere as well. Yeah, so indeed. usually the best practices, or this is what usually folks are doing, that they're simply using the same infrastructure, but in a different tenant. So usually they have the admin tenant with the, you know, with the, with the management software and the orchestration software, and then the workload itself runs on a separate tenant or maybe separate regions, separate availability zone, depending on the configuration of the, of the specific OpenStack setup and depending you know, on how the, the organization is, is running their own, their own uh, environment. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions? All right, guys, thank you very much. <laughs>